Welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith, and this is part two of my Frosthaven solo playthrough controlling the Drifter and the Banner Sphere. Now, where we left off in the last episode is a vote at the very end of part number one as to whether or not I should short rest with the Drifter. And if I do that, I'm hoping to do an epic attack here at the very back. It'll all hinge on the initiative in terms of how this shapes up. That is unknown to me, but I can short rest right now if I want to to get that card that I'd really like, which I talked about at the end of the last video, into my hand. Based on your voting, that was the decision to go forward with. So thank you so much for providing all the votes for that. So going ahead with a short rest, we know what to do. We grab the discard pile. We're going to shuffle this up without looking at it. One of the four cards in this deck are one of the cards that I really want back in my hand in order to do that powerful attack that I showed you guys in the end of the last video. If I happen to randomly select that card without looking, because that's how a short rest works, it ends up going into the lost pile, which is right here on the right. However, there's a way to mitigate it. I can take one hit point worth of damage. So I go from a six to a five in order to draw again. So let's see how this pans out. I got four cards, 25% chance I end up screwing this up and have to take a hit in order to get my card that I want. Let's see what happens. All right, so this one is Retaliate, Shield, and the Heal is going to be the one that's gone. I'm actually okay with that one. Uh, it is a nice one, though, because it does have a long-ranged heal. That's pretty cool, and the initiative is really high, but I think this is okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in the Lost Pile. Again, losing a card anytime is never really okay, but I do get to gain these three cards back in my hand, and awesome because the middle one is the one I'm really gunning for. Also want to point out that we now have the Lightning Eels in play. So the level two card for the Lightning Eels is out as well as a shuffle deck of ability cards to come flying at us later on. But right now we're going to pick the cards for our initiative for both of our main characters and then we do the flip. So this is actually quite exciting because now we get to see whether the plan that you guys voted on is going to pan out. What I'm doing here is having the Drifter go very, very early in the round at 19. It is a little risky because it'll make him a focal point and a target uh, if there is um, an equal distance between uh, my Banner Spear and the Drifter. So that's definitely not a positive per se, but I do get to go early enough on that I should be able to wipe out, if not hopefully damage heavily, a large majority of the uh, enemies on the board and then hopefully Hopefully the Banner Spear can come in a little bit later, which I'm not exactly happy about. There wasn't too much left cards-wise in her hand, and I didn't feel like short resting as she has a limit of 10 cards, so I don't really want to start burning her cards into the Lost Pile just yet. So we are going to have to cross our fingers here and hope that this all pans out, but plans do go awry. So let's see how things go for the Claw Crusher with the initiative. 44, okay, sitting right in between our two heroes. The Wave Thrower. 29! Oh, okay. Oh, this is really interesting. I have to make some serious decisions here. And last but certainly not least, we have the Lightning Eels, the new entry to the fray at 67. So as Gloomhaven sometimes does to you, the initiative coming out of the enemy decks can throw curveballs at you. We know the Drifter's going first, but then we also know the Wave Throwers, which are the ones at the back there that there's still three of, the ones that keep creating those eels on deck that are busting through the ship. They're going to go next, and then the Claw Crusher, before my Banner Spear even gets to have a chance to go. And the Banner Spear actually has the same initiative as the uh, eels. In that particular case, the Banner Spear will go first. 
So what gets interesting here is I don't really want to get up close and personal with the Drifter on these particular enemies as much anymore, mainly because the Drifter didn't have a ton of HP, and also we have additional options at our disposal to stop us from being hit from a lot of the attacks that I can now see, thanks to those cards being flipped, that are coming at me. So I'm going to change my strategy here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna stay in this location to start my turn. I'm literally not moving anywhere. I'm just turning my focus around to this guy right here who is already, the Claw Crusher is already poisoned and already has three hits against it. We need 10 to take it down. I'm gonna make a single attack against this thing, hoping to put some hurt and pain on it. And then I'm hoping later on the Banner Spear can come in and finish it off. Then I'm going to flip around and do a long range shot using the card that we short rested for in the first place. Place, but instead of using it for the top portion, I'm going to use it for the bottom portion. It allows me to do an attack two at range three, so I can go one, two, and I can target this area right here, these three, all in a pile. And the great thing is, two of them are elite. Uh, the back two here, these guys right here are both 8 HP, and this eel right here is 5. So heavy, heavy stuff, but the good news is my attack two plus the active... Uh, precision aim card that I have going gives me a plus two unranged attack. So I'll be going at a four for each of those, which also give me a potential to land bigger hits. Hopefully, fingers crossed. And keeps me as far away from them as possible for all the wonderful retaliation that's coming my way once the Drifter's turn is done. So now that you understand my mindset, let's go ahead and make our very first attack here. So what I'm gonna be doing is because I'm using the bottom portion of this card to make the ranged attack on those ones, the first thing I'm gonna do, as I mentioned, is I'm gonna use a top section of this card, not for what's stated on it, but as an actual attack of two. And it's a melee attack, so I don't get my precision name plus two bonus here. So it's just gonna be a two attack, but I'm really, again, just trying to help the Banner Spear out by weakening this guy more. It is poisoned, so I get a plus one attack. So it's gonna be three going into it. Now we just simply flip a card and see how much more. Here we go, hope for good things. Let's see extra damage, not less damage. Okay, that's not what we wanted to see. So it is a three going in, minus one is gonna make it two damage. Okay, well it could have been worse, but this is actually pretty good. Again, I'm helping the Banner Spear for her turn when she runs in. So three damage is coming off of the one that I attacked and it's gonna turn into a five. And as you can see, it's a regular unit. It has a health of 10. I'm using the bottom of the card as I mentioned. It will be tossed or lost, I should say, at the very end of this. And it's an attack two, range three. So I'm basically just gonna stay exactly where I am, make a ranged attack. I'm gonna hit these three right here and I get to choose the order in which I pick these to go after in terms of which one I wanna flip for first from the modifier deck. So let's go ahead and go after the big elite right here first. And again, I will be using my plus two from precision aim. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that right now. So we'll bump precision aim one down the track. Is there anything behind it? No, no XP to gain this time, but that plus two is going to be nice. Okay, Drifter, let's see this happen. Minus ones have been coming up too often for this deck. Let's see something else besides that. All right, that is not what I wanted. A plus zero, so that doesn't really make things too exciting. So just a four going on to the wave thrower. Now their health is eight. So it's half their health, it's still a pretty good hit. Next up, I'm gonna target the Elite Eel right here. Again, health of five. I'll be bumping up my Precision Aim again for this attack. So that is going to actually increase my XP by one. We'll go ahead and flip the card first though, see what happens. Hopefully it's good. There we go, that's a good attack. That would have been nicer to get on the other one. But guess what, we were at a four. A plus two is actually six, which is one further than what we need to kill the Eel anyway. So that's fantastic. We got rid of the Elite eel. So Precision Aim took this eel out with ease. And we have a loot drop there as well. The Drifter's been doing really good at going from a 3 to a 4 on the XP track. And last but not least, we're going to target this one in the far back based on the pattern we've got right here. Certainly want to use Precision Aim to bump this up even further. And just like that, we have now fully used this card so the tracker can be removed. This card is going to go as it states right here in the Lost Pile. Alright, let's see what the Modifier deck has for us. Come on, big thing. Things, ah, no good. Really, the eels are the only thing apparently we can hit, even though they're smaller. So that is four damage going against the regular wave thrower. Again, HP is eight, so half its health. 
So overall, not too bad. We put some damage on the two wave thrower and the number three wave thrower, half their health each. So we're working towards killing them off. That's gonna do it for the Drifter's turn. And this card, being that it has the Lost Symbol down below, will also go in the Lost Pile. So that's quite a few cards recently that have hit that Lost Pile. So we got three in there right now. Remember, my hand limit total is 12. So we're down to nine cards to use. Plus one of them is already taken up here in the active area and will also be lost once it runs out. Again, that movement one only triggers when we actually move. Now things are about to get a little stressful because we're gonna be having a tsunami coming at us from all three of the wave throwers. And unfortunately, the individual that is going to be targeted here is going to be the Drifter. So this Tsunami is a range 2 attack in terms of how many spaces away they need to be to make the attack in the first place. The Elite gets to go first before all the standard ones go, regardless of the numbers on them. So this Elite is going to move till it's within the range it needs, and it actually has a movement already of 2. The movement on the card states it gets plus 1, which is 3. That's way more than it needs anyway. It only needs to move 1 space to be within range 2 of the Drifter. So from here, the Drifter is going to be uh, the target of a tsunami attack. So the wave thrower here, the elite one anyway, has an attack of two. It's also going to mobilize me, which is not good. Um, the attack gets a minus one though, so that's I guess a plus. Um, it's actually a negative, but it's a plus for me. So it's going to be a one attack coming at me, and we're going to flip a card to see if that changes. I'm hoping it goes down to zero. Fingers crossed. Come on. Oh, even better, minus two. That's more than enough to reduce that to nothing. So that's fantastic. Now, however, it is very fortunate that the Drifter was able to avoid all damage, being that he doesn't have that much health to give, but conditions still occur regardless of how much damage actually gets applied to your character. So Immobilize still hits me as a condition, which is going to affect me later on. So I'm gonna go ahead and place that there for the Drifter. So now we move to the regular, regular wave throwers as we're pinned to the ground, thanks to the Elite one. Uh, I won't be moving very far next time around here. Uh, this wave thrower is going to actually is perfectly fine where it is. So this wave thrower right here needs to be in range two. So one, two. Again, this does not block anything. An obstacle does not block range. So I can be attacked by this one. So it's two away already. It doesn't have to use any movement whatsoever. So it goes straight to the attack. Now the good thing here is that the regular units of the wave throwers only have one attack as a base stat. And then this is already a negative one attack because of the modifier card it uses. Or not the modifier, but the uh, ability that it's going to use. So it's already at a zero. So that's good. Hopefully it stays that way. Let's see what the modifier deck does. Rats. So it is going to be a plus one, which means I will take a damage. But you know what? I can take one damage. I'm okay with that. So thanks to that wave thrower, we take one point of damage, dropping us from six down to five. Next up is this wave thrower in the far back over here is going to use, let's see, actually for movement, it starts with one, gains plus one, so it has two movement. That is enough to get this individual right here, which is within two to make an attack on me. That's not fun. Let's go ahead and see what happens. It's at a zero to start for the attack, just like the last one. And look at that, it stays at a zero plus nothing else happens. So that actually worked out pretty good. I really do think not getting up close and personal uh, was a good thing because remember, if I had gone up here and used the attack, this eel would actually be hitting me later on too. So I avoided an attack, but also was able to lay down some damage. Plus the bonus was I actually was able to help out, hopefully the banner spear killing this thing off. We'll see whether that pans out. But next we actually need to activate the claw crusher. So the Claw Crusher will try to target two individuals, but it is only melee, so it can't get between both of our characters to try to make us both a target to be able to hit us both. So it's just gonna go after the one. I'm already beside it, so it's gonna be happy to sit exactly where it is regardless of its move here. And we're gonna move right to the attack, which is a minus one off of the regular version of this Claw Crusher on the left-hand side. The attack value is two, so minus one. It's coming at me with just a one so far, and it's going to poison me. So my day is going to get even worse. So now we have to go to the modifier deck and see what gets added on top of the one. Still not sure why I said what gets added onto as if I want to get hurt here. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Okay, good. So a zero. We're all right with that. So one damage is going to come through. I'm definitely going to take that damage, but uh, the poison was coming through regardless. So the Drifter is going to drop from five down to four. I think healing is definitely in his future. Plus poison condition is going to sit up here. 
Now this is another reason that I changed my strategy up completely in terms of keeping the drifter put for this particular round. There was a reason for that and that's because the banner spear has such cool card combinations when the orientation of an ally and the banner spear herself are in the right orientation. If they are, she can let out some pretty decent attacks. So in this case, I've put myself in a position to make that happen. So the bottom of the card I'm going to use first for the banner spear is this one right here, and it is move four. It's certainly going to be more movement than I actually need to get to where I want to go, but one, two, three to put myself right behind. So we're basically surrounding uh, this Claw Crusher. And now I'm going to go ahead and use Pincer Movement. This is a really cool card. So you see at the very, very top, it is going to be an attack five card. This orientation states that the Banner Spear, uh, basically whenever it's talking about the gray, it's talking about the character you're using, has to be here. The enemy has to be here. And your ally, which is green, has to be there. So we have nailed that combination. Doesn't have to align. I've talked about this before. It doesn't have to look like this. And it just happens to look like this. It could be in any orientation you could turn the card around in. But we happen to land it perfectly. Plus, it's going to muddle and I'm going to get an XP out of it. So we got five damage or at least five attack going in. Let's find out if the modifier deck adds more to that. And just so you guys remember, this particular Claw Crusher is poisoned. So we're going in with a five attack plus one because of the poison. It has five damage on it and it needs 10 HP total to be killed. So we've already got enough, even if a minus one shows up. So let's see how this goes. Ha! We had way more damage than we possibly needed there. And the final Claw Crusher has been defeated. We can remove this guy, one less big individual to deal with. So a loot drops right there. The muddle condition that we would have gotten on the card doesn't matter because that enemy is dead. But what does matter is the XP, which will jump us from one to two for the Banner Spear. Last but not least are the Lightning Eels. Now there's really important rules on the actual stack card itself here. It says, can only enter water and movement is unaffected by water. So in other words, these eels are just going to sit in water spaces only. So when I killed the elite eel, what it does is essentially it opens up a path for an eel that's already started in water to move to another space with water. That's really the only thing it can do. So it's going to follow the path of water as the ship is breaking apart and use that to try to get close to us. So as long as we can kind of play cat and mouse with the eels, they're not going to come up onto the ship and start running around. They're eels. They don't do that. So from this right here, it says movement is minus one. It is the only actual eels on the board right now are just regular one, regular eels. And uh, they are three for their movement, minus one. So they're going to be moving at two. And as of right now, there's only one that can potentially use uh, a water space to get closer to us. So that eel is definitely going to move. And besides that, there won't be any attacks happening. So where the elite eel was, as I mentioned, is right there. This eel will move to try to get closer to our heroes, eventually trying to attack them. But as of right now, that's all they can do. And they can't make any attacks to anybody adjacent to them. So that is the end of their turn. That's going to be the end of the entire round. So we'll go ahead, clean up, and begin the next one. No L elements whatsoever need to be moved down to the left so we can skip past that we can decide right now to short rest i don't believe i'll be doing that i do only have two cards left with the banner spear but both of them are useful and that's in this situation at least so i think i'm going to actually hold on to them because i like to use them to actually put some damage on some of these guys the drifter already has pretty much everything available in terms of cards uh, as the short rest recently certainly helped with that so in terms of short resting we're going to pass on by that and then we also didn't pull any cards that had the shuffle symbol on them so we can move right into picking two cards for our heroes each so i got my cards set for both of my characters i got a 10 over here for the banner spear and a 20 over here for the drifter now let's go over to the lurker wave thrower and the lightning ale see what they have so my aim here is to try to get the drifter healed up let's find out what the initiative is for the enemies the wave throwers are going to use their powerful claws with a plus two attack wow that is going to be interesting. And then down here for the eels, it's going to be nothing special, but a 20. That's pretty early on. So the very first thing I'm going to do with the Banner Spear is I'm going to use this card right here at all costs. For the top section, it says heal three. 
affects all allies, so it doesn't affect the Banner Spear, suffer one damage for each ally whose point value increased with the heal ability. So I'm definitely gonna be using this on the Drifter, but remember when you heal and you actually have a condition like poison, for instance, or wound or something like that, you remove those conditions instead of actually gaining the actual heal. So I heal, I remove the poison off the Drifter, which I'll do right now, this is going to go away. That is a nice benefit the downside is I don't get the benefit of the three, which would have been fantastic. So that goes into the discard pile. I also am going to take a hit of damage on the Banner Spear. So I'm dropping myself from a 10. She's going down to a 9, doing that off camera. And then secondly here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the bottom portion of this card right here. Uh, for 18, this was called Driving Inspiration for just movement, not actually going to use it for the summon just yet. I want to hold on to the summon because I don't know what else this particular scenario is going to throw at me, and I don't want to summon too many cards with a character that only has 10 and run into a situation where I run out of cards. So again, we'll use it for just movement. My Banner Spear is going to get a little greedy and actually go over for the coin, but it's not just the coin that's actually something of interest. It's the fact that I'm trying to get into a position where I can use cards she has later on, again in combination for big time attacks. So I'm going to move for one, two over this way as I have a plan, if everything goes to plan, that will allow me to use her cards. Now, after picking this up, I go to the loot deck, draw a card to see what I receive. And I've got myself three coins. That's pretty awesome. So I'll go ahead and place that over in my loot pile. That sounds pretty nice. Now we'll kick things off with a banner spear. I do have the same initiative as the eels, but again, I'm a hero, I'm a mercenary, so I get to go first, ha. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the top card for a heal three, which I can use on myself, even though it does have range as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and discard this. It's gonna allow me to heal three, which takes me from four up to seven, which gives me a little bit more of a fighting chance against these enemies. And the great thing is to, again, immobilize is something I can't get rid of through healing. It's an actual condition. You are stuck to the ground, basically they shot something at you that paralyzed you to your location and isn't gonna come off to the end of my turn, which will happen very soon. The last card, I'm gonna use the bottom of this for movement, but remember, I can't do any movement. I can't use this for anything. I could technically use it for the attack too. It's, it's, uh, it's debatable, but again, I'm burning cards and I'd like to avoid that. So I'm actually gonna choose not to do anything. And you are allowed to do that as long as there isn't any negative effect that you would have suffered otherwise. So. That is all squared away and good, and I can now remove this token right here. So the eels over here, they're going to move if they can, and there's no reason for any of them to move. They do melee attacks, they don't have range, they can't do any of this, but they are still going to infuse the battlefield with that element. So we'll go ahead and bump that up to the strong column. And of course, this is pretty unfortunate because as you remember from other cards that they have received in the past, they do consume this element in order to make their attacks more nasty. So they're just setting themselves up for something pretty bad. And now unfortunately the lurker wave thrower is going to go ahead and start and looking at all the rest of them the normal ones now again the elite goes first the elite is the only one that will actually be able to do anything this turn the other ones can't move at all because they only have a base movement of one minus one zero so they can't even get close to attack me so they won't move which means they can't make melee attacks but the elite has a two move minus one is one so it can make the one move it needs to get right up next to me and it's the first one that activates anyway it's going to be making a pretty big attack it's two attack base and two or a plus two on that card is already up to a four and we haven't even flipped over the modifier deck yet so let's go ahead and find out how much damage is coming my way here minus one okay that's good so three damage coming my way it is definitely a good thing that we healed recently so we can drop ourselves from seven down to four because i don't want to discard any cards yet i do want to show you guys exactly how the movement worked out for that attack the elite was right here it had one movement so it simply moves here and made the attack it did the rest of them don't have any movement Movement, they can't go anywhere but this certainly causes a problem for me because now they're not bunched up as much so my banner spear with the attacks that the banner spear has are very very good if things are bunched up we have two of them together that we could pretend that i'm kind of hoping things will work out in a way that i can arrange myself a pretty good attack on the next round the element will drop down to the waning column 
And as we speak with the Banner Spear, I'm going to go ahead and short rest. I could choose to long rest, but you know what? My health is pretty good in the Banner Spear right now. It's at nine, so I don't really need to long rest. and I don't really want to have her just sit for a round. So I'm going to go ahead and shuffle these cards, as you could probably hear already. I'm going to grab one at random here, and if I do want to keep it, I will just draw another and take a damage. So let's see how this goes with the short rest. Again, it would be advantageous to me to long rest at some point to get this Eagle Eye Goggle thing refreshed again so I can use it later but as of right this moment i really don't want to see any more eels spawn so i'm trying to kill these things off as fast as humanly possible because it can just prolong this thing on me so let's go ahead split the deck i'm just kind of doing some really ugly looking shuffling right now and we're gonna go ahead and just split one more time we'll take the top card Ooh, it's a regroup it's a heal two for range two with regenerate ability that's actually i believe a new ability for Frosthaven. So how Regenerate works is at the start of a figure's turn, they perform a heal one action, and this condition is lost if the figure ever suffers damage. Regenerate triggers before wound. So that's interesting to note as well. So even though the card would actually be pretty cool, I'm gonna have to let it go. I don't wanna take another damage, although I do really wanna use this card. Healing is useful, but I do still have another heal three in the deck, so I'm okay that way. Plus I have a summon card, which I can use to actually bring about more healing so of all the ones to go this one's okay although i like the initiative but i'm just gonna let it go all right so we got ourselves our cards set for both of our mercenaries we got a 32 right here a 61 over here we're certainly not aiming to be the first ones to go we'll see how this pans out i've got some plans for some big time attacks if everything works out again it comes down to the initiative of the enemies and what they're gonna do this always seems to be the most nerve-wracking moment is flipping these initiative cards for the enemies because it really throws my plan sideways oh my gosh that is so early uh, but thank goodness it's the eels that got that early one. Okay, so they'll be out of the way. Uh, that's really bad. Oh, wow, that would have been really bad. So they would have been able to make use of the sun to hurt people that are adjacent to them and all that good stuff. Okay, that's actually pretty good. I'm happy with that one, even though it's a really early card. Let's hope the wave throwers are later than 61. If they are, I've got a really good chance here. Let's see. 51. Oh, they're going to sit right in between and they have range. No, that's going to make things so much tougher. The eels are going to go first, and these lightning eels cannot hurt anyone currently because this current card would have them consume the sun element, which is currently in the waning column, which is something they could do if we were adjacent to them. Then they would go ahead and give us a nice little shock for two damage, but thankfully that's not going to happen, so we can skip past their turn. There's no movement for them to move through any water available to get closer to us. So what's going to happen now is the banner spear is going to go. I've got an amazing combination here that worked out perfectly i had planned this from last round and now you guys get to see why i put myself in the position i did for this upcoming turn let's see how well this goes okay so first thing i'm going to do is use a card called combined effort for our, the banner spear the first thing is to move two so i'm going to do exactly that we're going to go one and two right to this position right here underneath of it it then says two allies within range two may perform a move two so my drifter is actually two away so is within the range two from the banner spear so i get to go move two with the drifter the reason this is important is because i need to get the drifter in position so that during this banner spears current turn a wonderful combined attack can happen based on where everyone is situated what's even cooler is the fact that because the banner spear has given a move to to the drifter it's considered an actual move action so my sustained momentum active ability which is on my drifter can activate giving me an additional two movement so this card right here is going to activate moving this down here also giving the drifter an additional experience point and the plus two movement the drifter is going to increase the xp track up to five from four the drifter is then going to fall back behind the banner spear one two and three so you can see how cool this combination worked out to be not only using cards but active abilities to get exactly enough movement needed to get in the exact position for one of the spears most deadly attacks now it's not the most deadly attack but it is certainly one of the tougher ones to get aligned and it's this one right here called tip of the spear and you can see the alignment right here is two red enemies as you can see right here and i've aligned it now so it makes sense you've got the active banner spear right 
right there in the gray, and then the ally behind. This is gonna be an attack three on both of those two individual wave throwers. Plus it's a pierce, which would be great if they had shields, but they don't. And I'm gonna get experience off of it, which is fantastic. So time for some big time hits and hopefully, if we get lucky, we'll be able to wipe both of them out, but we're gonna to need to see some plus ones on these modifiers. Here we go. So we're going after the very first one in the line. This is the number one wave thrower. Let's see what we land. A plus one, so we got exactly enough to eliminate the very first one. Well, seeing as we're on a roll, let's flip and see what the next one's gonna be. We've got four damage on that one. It's number three. And again, we need a plus one. Let's see how it goes. No, so close. We could have had two kills there. That would have been pretty epic, but so far that was still pretty awesome. So the Banner Spear with a combined effort from the Drifter was able to take out this individual right here, cleaning it out and a loot will drop right there. Again, getting rid of those wave throwers are huge because of the reason that they continually keep bringing eels in, potentially based on the ability card that gets pulled for them. So we'll go ahead and now remove all the damage from the one position off of the tracker. That one's gone, the loot has dropped and we're gonna go ahead and gain some XP. The Banner Spear will move from two up to three. As you can see up top here, the number one's been fully removed as it's been knocked off. The second one that got hit was number three for three damage. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop three damage on the number three one. So now we're one away from taking that one out. Now it's time to activate those wave throwers. They're not too happy with what just happened. So they're gonna start off with the elite. The elite has two movement. Minus one is just one movement, but the elite doesn't need to use any of it because there's a tack underneath that has a range of five so both of the individuals that i have out there for mercenaries are possible targets currently the banner spear is three spaces away while the drifter from what i can tell here yes is four spaces away so the nearest hit here the nearest attack is going to be going after the banner spear so this actually works out perfectly for me because again we're keeping that drifter hidden away being that i only have four health on him so this attack is coming in at two for a base plus one is three pretty hefty to start let's go ahead and flip a card and see how this goes Zero, but still three coming at me. The Banner Spear, definitely not anticipating that kind of hit. And it was a decent hit indeed, dropping me from nine down to six. I don't want to remove any cards from my deck, so I'm pretty happy to take that damage. The regular wave thrower now in the very back here, again, won't be moving at all. And there's no disadvantage because they're not right up against me while they're doing the range attack. So they're happy to sit exactly where they are. They can make uh, a range attack against either of my two characters currently, but we'll go for the shortest path as its focus. So the banner spear again is going to be the target here. So we're gonna go ahead and flip the modifier deck. In this case, it's a one attack on a regular plus one from the card flip. So it's two going into the modification. Let's see what it is ouch that is a huge huge hit and that would have been a lot better to take on the drifter seeing as he has an iron helmet to stop that type of thing from happening it would have just been a zero sadly for the banner spear though that attack comes across at four which is way more than i anticipated so that certainly opens up the door for some questions here now in terms of how many cards i've lost on the banner spear so far it's been three and i do know that there's going to be more to this scenario so i need to be smart about this if i was to talk toss another card I'd be going down to just six cards going forward I really don't like that I also don't like the fact that I'm down to what could potentially be two for health which is not the greatest but I do have the ability to heal and I do have a summon that I could potentially bring out later on down the line that can also start healing us so I think I'm just going to take the attack damage and suck it up so it's going to drop us all the way down to two that's pretty dangerous so now more than ever, am I happy that I was able to make that one attack and kill one of those wave throwers because having two of them make that type of attack would have been super scary. <laughs> Could have put me in a really bad spot. Uh, still not the greatest as of right now, but good news now is the last character to activate here is going to be the Drifter. So let's see what we can pull off. Well, we're gonna risk it and see how it goes. Let's go ahead with the bottom portion of this card right here for its movement, not what's on the card itself. This is called Continuous Health. Using it for movement of two, again, remember, 
where my active ability for sustained momentum is going to kick in and has to, giving me an additional two movements. So I have a total now of four. I'll go ahead and move that stat down the track. I don't get any XP for it. So we'll skip right back here to the movement portion where let's move the drifter. Where do I want to go? Well, I want to take out this elite. I want to take out as many of these guys as possible, really. Uh, this one only needs one attack to kill it, like literally just one single damage. This one still needs four. So I'm going to go after the one that's the harder to kill to see if we get lucky here. So one, two, and three. We'll put ourselves right here. I'd love to grab the loot, but that's not going to happen. My focus is taking this guy out. And what I'm going to do right now is play the top portion of this card. This is called Bloodletting. And it's an attack three. It says, if this attack kills the target, move the character token on one of your persistent abilities back one space. So basically, I can gain back that two plus movement that I just used to get there. So that's pretty cool. Another thing with the Drifter I really like is he has a number of cards like that where when you use the card, you actually get to basically recharge your persistent abilities, which is awesome because he has a whole bunch of them. So it's a really cool mechanic that I like, whereas most other characters I've used in the past have burnt through those active abilities really quick. Um, and then once they're gone, they're gone. The ability to recharge them is really handy, especially once you get the ranged plus two attack out, the melee plus two, the movement, the shield, there's a, there's a healing, there's a bunch of them. So we're gonna go ahead with the attack three here, hoping for good things. We gotta go to the modifier deck. We really have to cross our fingers because we need a plus one or better. Here we go. Here's hoping this pans out for me. No, it still didn't. Oh my gosh. So I've got two of these guys down to one health. Well, I certainly know what my priority is going to be next round. It's going to be going as early as humanly possible and likely taking two shots of very small attack values to try to just knock these guys out. So here's three damage going on the number two elite. So both of these lurkers that are left over are just one damage away from death, which is crazy. The other two eels, as you can faintly see below here, are just two health to take out. So if we get lucky, we might be able to somehow combo a kill or a wipe across the board of all of them. We'll see if we can pull it off in one round. This element has disappeared from the battlefield. I won't be short resting with either of my characters, but this deck needs to be shuffled. Here's what I got set up for my two characters, a 21 initiative and a 23. Let's start off with the lightning eels and see what they're doing. We got a nine. Wow, that's really aggressive, but at the same time, they are stuck where they are at, so they won't hurt. Ooh, actually, no. The banner spear is right beside one, so that is definitely not gonna be good. Okay, moving on to the next deck, sorry, the wave thrower. 98. Oh no, and this is when they're going to be summoning more lightning eels, so hopefully we can avoid that from happening. Well, this is pretty unfortunate. We have a banner spear right next to one of the eels, and they are going to move, but they won't because they can't go anywhere. They're going to attack, though. It's a minus one. It targets all adjacent enemies, so it's going to be the banner spear, the only one. It's a minus one attack. Its base attack for the regular lightning eel is already at a two, so it's just a one. I only have two health, so you got to hope here that I can stay just below that so I don't have to burn cards. This is pretty dicey, let's see how it goes. Uh, okay, that's good. So it just ended up being just the one damage, which I'm going to take, leaving the Banner Spear down at one health. That's definitely not where I wanna be right now. But I survived, so that's good. And this is done. There's nothing else that the eels can do at this point. So thankfully it's coming back to the mercenaries turn. And now we're going to try our best to ensure that there's no more wave throwers left on the board before they initiate and bring more eels in. So the first thing I'm going to do here with the banner spear is use a card called Javelin. It's an attack three, range three, and it is going to boost the wind afterwards. So for now, I'll just go ahead and bump that all the way up to the strong column. The attack, and that normally does happen at the very end, but I'm just doing this for ease attack three right now and we're going to be hoping for good things of course it only needs one more hit in order to actually kill it so we should be okay unless of course the null comes up is the modifier deck in our favor we're about to find out Yes, it is. Nothing happened that made anything worse. So we had more than enough to take that elite down. So that's fantastic news. We'll remove that guy from the game, dropping loot right there. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and use the bottom portion of this pincer movement card, move one and then loot one. So I'm gonna literally just go here again. It doesn't really matter about the loot one at the bottom because at the end of your turn, if you're literally standing on a hex with loot, you get it anyway. So this loot is gonna be gathered by the banner spear. She is very, very happy to be stealing all of the loot. And that's gonna remove that card out of the way. We can go ahead and draw from the deck to find out exactly what that was. Looks like we got some wood. 
Moving right along to the drifter, and again, we're focusing on trying to get these uh, wave throwers off of the ship as fast as possible. We're gonna use the bottom portion of this card here for its movement only. So that's gonna have us move like this. I just wanna move one because my next card that I want to use, it has to be in range of two in order to make two different ranged attacks, which I'm gonna be using this one right here called Draining Arrows. So it's only attack one, which is really risky because I could actually miss killing this thing. It literally could happen, but I at least get to muddle them, so that's good. And I can target both the eel and this. And the good thing is this only needs one damage to, to be killed off. This one just needs two. So I might be able to pull this off. It all gonna come down to those modifier cards, so cross your fingers. Now, another thing I wanna make notice of is the fact that I just moved, so I have to burn this movement on my active ability which moves over i will be gaining an xp so that is going to jump me from where i'm currently sitting at five up to six which i'm going to do just off screen here so that's pretty good i'm moving up the xp track quite a bit let's flip the modifier cards little scared which one do i want to target first great question i don't know i'm terrified i kind of want to go straight after the wave thrower but who knows how this is going to pan out let's just do it let's go for the big one come on yes it was the right call okay so, I mean, we got more than what we needed anyway, because we already had what we needed, but it wasn't a negative. That would have that would have put us in the hole. So we killed off the final wave thrower. That is huge. Now we're gonna make an attack at the eel. The thing with the eel is it has two health. I'm hitting it with one so far. We need the plus one now. So here's hoping there's another one underneath. No, it's the total opposite. So we went in with a one and we came out with zero. So the eel still, actually both of those eels at the end are still alive, but especially the one we just attacked. The good news is there won't be any more eels coming out to play. So that has been removed. And now we're gonna go ahead and grab a loot token to throw in that position right there. Now, one thing you might've noticed is we just went ahead and killed off the last wave thrower, but I hadn't gone ahead and actually cleared off the damage for it. Believe me, they're both dead. You just saw it happen. So all of these are going to go away, including the actual uh, information. And, and actually we skipped straight past this aid from below because they can't activate as we've killed them off before they could. This is another reason why strategizing and trying to kill things off that are going to activate later in a round or even at the beginning of a round, if you can pull it off, uh, can prevent all kinds of bad things from happening. So this disappears and literally the only thing we have to worry about now is simply just the lightning eel so the only ones left we're gonna have to go ahead now we're in the end of the round shuffle some decks so the first deck we'll shuffle here is this lightning eel deck we'll check the modifier decks for any shuffling and we're gonna wane down the wind element so the lightning eel deck has been all shuffled and i also don't want to forget to actually put the muddle token on the one that survived because the condition still applies so muddle is going to go on eel number seven so it's going to go on this one right here one thing i want to correct is the fact that i put these two cards somehow in the last turn or so after i used this combination of cards to do that attack i put them in the lost pile of uh, the banner spear by accident this card right here regroup with the regenerate that we talked about is the only card i've lost in the banner spear these should not have been sitting in there so they're going to go sit in the discard pile it doesn't change anything gameplay wise but it certainly could have looked confusing as to why they were sitting on the wrong side of the character board so the drifter is going to go next and you know what I only have one card left in my hand so I could short rest right now or I could just choose to long rest and I think I'm just gonna go ahead and long rest so that'll put me at initiative 99 and then I'm gonna have the banner spear go ahead with an initiative of 18 and we'll move into this next round knowing that mostly the only issue that we have here is the banner spear is right up against one of the eels so the banner spear is gonna have to kill that eel quite quickly and then we're gonna be trying to heal ourselves up as fast as we possibly can, as well as trying to kill that other eel. I'm trying to make the most of a long rest here with the drifter so I can get my boots back and kind of gain two health and all that kind of extra stuff. I'm trying to see if I can combo some quick heals here so that we're ready for whatever comes next. So let's see what those eels are doing. Paralyzing Bite, 67. Okay, it's going way later than uh, the Banner Spear. So I thankfully, even though I'm right next to an eel, I'm hopefully gonna be able to deal with it. So what I'm gonna do to start things off here is I'm gonna go ahead and make an attack. And this actually worked out perfectly. Plus it's gonna get me some cool XP as well. But this is gonna be Resolved Courage. This almost guarantees I can do this as long as I don't get a null. I'll probably end up jinxing myself again. But again, the pattern here is perfect. We're already in alignment here. Banner Spear's up top, allies behind, and the eel's in position on 
on that far right hand side in the red. So it's an attack three, immobilize, and I get an experience point out of this. It just comes down to this card pull. I need two in order to get through to kill it. So far we have three. So let's see what the modifier deck has for us. There we go, now things are going away. That's a four, that's a nice, easy kill. Four damage going through, that removes that eel, no problem. We aren't doing too bad at all, because you can see here we got another loot token right there. We've only got a couple spots of water, three of them actually in total, so we did pretty good at holding the ship together overall so far. The Banner Spear is gonna get another XP for that kill, which is great, going up to four. With the second card for my Banner Spear, I'm gonna use the bottom section for movement of two, discarding it, and I'm going to move into the water terrain here to grab this loot token. So this is just basically grabbing it from the more, you know, the harder terrain to get inside of, seeing as I'm right beside it. So that loot token, now I can go to the loot deck and find out what I get. Look at that, we got ourselves some fur, some skin. So there won't be any major activation activities happening here for the eels. It's stuck in its current pond of water, nothing around it to attack, nothing, nowhere it can move. So that is going to wrap up its turn and now it's gonna move the drifter at initiative 99 for a long rest. So as it states right here for a long rest, we can lose one discard, which we get to choose, recover the rest, heal ourselves for two. I don't have any conditions to heal, so I actually get to go back up from four to six, which is quite nice. And it says right here, I get to refresh all spent items. So the Boots of Striding are coming back, spinning that over, allowing me to have some additional movement later on. Out of all the cards to pick from, from the discard pile in order to lose, I'm gonna choose Violent Inheritance. It's gonna go in the loss pile. So for this round, I'm gonna have the Banner Spear actually long rest at 99, and I'm gonna have a 23 for the Drifter. Now to find out what the Lightning Eels are going to do, Leaping Dive. Oh my gosh, this thing is going to, wow. It can't do it, but that's incredible. I've not seen that card come through yet. So it's a move plus two. Oh, it might actually be able to pull this off. No, it can't because I'm already in one of the water spaces. Oh my goodness, this is crazy. So, so it's a move plus two and they have uh, a move already here uh, by, by default, the regular ones of three but it's giving them the ability to jump, which means that if I hadn't covered up the one water space that I had, they could have jumped, he could have jumped closer to me and potentially, you know, tried to come after me, uh, but it can't. It's not gonna be able to get closer to me to make an attack or anything like that. And so this is going to happen at the very bottom. It's going to infuse things and it's certainly gonna happen earlier than anything else I have going on. So the only thing to do to resolve the Lightning Eels uh, initiative right here at 12, starting it out, is just to bump up the element of the sun. So that element's gonna go all the way up to the strong column. And this is what I mean by seriously getting lucky there that I didn't have my Banner Spear just sitting right beside the water because the eel with the activation that it had really early in the round could have, if my Banner Spear hadn't have been here and had it been here, jumped literally from there into this area right here and done its attack, which would have been pretty wild. I have not seen that happen during this playthrough. That card was definitely a shock. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is gonna use this bottom portion of Unbreakable for two movement. I'm gonna move myself right on top of this loot coin, which I will get, or this loot token, I should say. Draw a loot card from the deck and I've got two coins which I'll place on the Drifter. That's the first loot that he's grabbed, although the Banner Spear's been grabbing all kinds of loot along the way so far. And last, but certainly not least, I'll be using Draining Arrows for the top one here. Attack one, range two, which I am in. Target two, well, there's only one person I can target. I can't target the same, uh, same enemy twice. And I'm gonna be able to muddle it, which I don't think is really what I want. I just want to kill this thing off. So let's see how this thing goes. There we go, finally. Plus one, that is enough. So the one of the attack plus one is two. That's enough to wipe it out. We have killed all the enemies off the ship. We cleared the decks. So that eel is out of here and another token here going into that space. As you can see here, we got a two water tiles here and one over there. So we did an overall pretty good job of keeping the ship together as I mentioned earlier. Now that we've completed killing off all of the enemies, we actually jump back to the narrative. You drive the lurkers chittering and clawing from your ship, but there is no peace yet. Below deck, you hear more creaking and crashing as if your boat is being torn apart from the inside. This hatch right here in hex A that we talked about in part number one is now a stairway down below deck and we can now enter it. 
The Banner Spear is last to go in the round, long resting. I get to choose which card from the discard pile I want to lose. I also gain two health, so I go from one to three. That's kind of a relief because that was super, super close and very tight to being killed off quite easily. Also, the Eagle Eye Goggles are going to come back, so I'll be able to use those in a particular situation where we need to have an advantage during an attack. Now I'm going to go through this deck and determine which card I want to lose. This is actually a really hard decision because all of these cards in this deck, in terms of the discard pile, are all super, super handy. And I can see myself holding on to all of them for a number of different reasons. But I think I'm going to go ahead and actually remove or lose Resolved Courage, even though we definitely use this to our advantage a couple times. We've come to the end of another round, so all of the elements are going to move down. So our main mission now is to get below deck. Stuff is going on and we got to get down there and find out what that is. So I've got my initiative set 67 here and 20. There's no enemies whatsoever to worry about. We just got to get below deck and be ready for whatever's down there. So the Drifter is going to be going first, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a card for its bottom here called Continuous Health. This sounds like something I could use right now. It says the next six times you perform a heal, add plus two to the heal. So that's going to be a nice active ability that's going to be going on. So we'll go ahead and add this Continuous Health card to our active row and place a tracker on it. With there finally being some peace for a moment, it seems like a good time to use the card No Remorse for the Drifter, which is a range 3 heal at the top there. It's 1, 2, 3 away from the Banner Spear, so I will be healing and taking advantage of that Continuous Health bonus, which I'm going to tick up right now, and by doing so is going to gain me an additional XP. So the Drifter is going to bump up the Continuous Heal here, and there is the XP that has been revealed, so the track is going to go from 6 up to 70. He's really pulling in the XP. And this ends up being a massive heal for the Banner Spear. So Banner Spear is currently at three. A two plus the three is five. So all the way back up to eight. That is going to keep her from death. And because the Banner Spear is such great friends with the Drifter, the Banner Spear is now going to go ahead and play at all costs and heal, affecting all allies. This is going to be a nice three health for the Drifter, who's currently at seven, bringing him right back up to a total of ten. So he is full health right now. I've done that off screen. Down below here it does say, though, that this Banner Spear will suffer a damage for each ally whose hit point value increased. So I'll draw from an 8 to a 7, but that certainly is still worth it. We now have the Banner Spear at 7 and the Drifter at 10. We're in much better position for whatever is coming our way down below decks. And speaking of what's going to be coming our way down below the decks, we've got a move 4 at the bottom here for the Banner Spear, and that's just enough movement to get us into that hatch. So the Banner Spear is going to jump out of the water, one, two, three, and four, landing on the hatch and able to go down below deck. And this is where we're going to stop part number two. When we pick it up in part number three, we're going to be below deck and it's going to be a whole new interesting puzzle to solve inside of this dungeon crawler to find out whether or not we can pull it off. Hopefully we've set ourselves up health-wise in a good way and it really worked out nicely in terms of doing a long rest on each character on, on different rounds and then just really going crazy with the healing right in the moment of quiet before diving below deck. So things seem to be working out in our favor. We'll see if that continues when we go into part number three. Thank you guys so much for watching this. I'm really having a lot of fun playing along with you. I uh, can't wait to read your comments below and feedback. If you notice anything I miss, let me know. Thanks for watching, and as always, keep on rolling solo.